Hey everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now in our last episode, Making an EVA Foam Fiora Knife Part 1, you saw us get most of the way through the build. We got the cool multi-layered blade done, we got the front end of the handle, and we sandwiched together the two pieces around our wood dowel for the bulk of our handle. Um, so now in this episode, making an EVA foam Fiora knife part two, we're going to finish up the handle, shape it, and then we're going to seal it and paint it, and man, the paint job turns out great. We've got two tones of, of metal in here. We've got the uh, metallic blue highlight uh, on the blade and in the handle, and we've got a black handle. And uh, then we weather it up. So really easy paint job, just as easy as the build. Uh, so if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. All right, now we're going to piece together the piece of our handle that's going to go on the end, and that's a couple four millimeters, a 12 millimeter, and a six millimeter. And this is really easy stuff, all right? We're going to come in first. All right, there we go. Now here is our next two pieces, our four millimeter and our six millimeter, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the center window of this four millimeter piece out, all right? So we're going to come in here. All right, there we go. Perfect. Now we're going to take this four millimeter and we're going to stick it to the six millimeter. All right, there we go. Set it down just like that. Normally I don't mess with super glue without my gloves on, but this one time I'm going to do it. Okay, now we're going to go over to the bandsaw and we're going to cut out just outside of our line, okay? All right, there we go. Check that out. Cool little recess down in there. That is nice. And then this is going to come in and float right in the middle right here. All right, now let's go ahead and knock this out on the bandsaw also. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did on the front part of the grip. We're gonna float this little four millimeter piece right in the middle as a spacer. Then we're gonna sandwich that on top and we're gonna have that cool recess right around the middle. Check that out. All right. All right, there we go. Slid it around, got it right in place. There we go. Line it up. That's beautiful. Wow. All right. All right, nice. Look at that. We got the cool little cavern down in there in between the two pieces, the little recess at the top. Nice. All right, that's going to go right on the back of the handle like that. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get our gloves on and our dust mask and let's round this over. Let's contour it to fit our hand. Nice, look at that sculpted handle. Oh, oh that fits great. All right, let's come in with our 220. Let's clean it up a little bit. Beautiful. That is really nice. That handle's super cool. Fits perfectly. All right, let's clean up. All right, there we go. We've got our mark drawn on there for where our handle's going to go. All right, there we go. Give it a minute. That's so cool. And the blade's stiff because it's got a wood dowel in it. Look at that thing, man. Nice. All right. All right, here's our four little circles, our last details. We've got a six millimeter and a couple four millimeters. All right, so let's come in with our sharpened brass tube. Right through there. 
Look at that, about three spins and it goes right through, as long as you sharpen it. All right, there we go. All right, now what we're gonna do on all four of these is we're gonna slightly round them over, okay? So we're gonna use our Dremel. All right, there we go, nice and rounded off. Really easy. Now these are little, so you don't want to hit them too hard. All right, we're gonna use our X-Acto knife for this. That's it, nice and light. Now we've got four cool little rounded over rivets that are Nice and tight. Foam's been tightened up. All right, we're going to put some super glue down. Get the bottom wet. We're going to center it right here at the back, right in the middle, right there. Do the same thing. We're going to put it right in the middle, right there. And this is going to go up on the handle right here. Like that. All right, check out that sweet knife. Man, really nice details on there. We've got the cool little taper on this inner part of the blade and then we completely tapered the blade to a point on both sides. Really nice and really easy. And we got all these cool little little recess areas on the blade, a rivet mark in there. That's a really nice dimensional blade right there. And uh, back here on the handle, the back end and the front end, we've got that foam sandwich where we left the smaller inner piece so it creates that cool little recess down there inside the hand grip. Um, then we rounded off a bunch of rivets on the back end there and down in here. Nice round detail, looks good. And uh, we sculpted the handle, really easy stuff. We just rounded the edges, contoured some of the grip spots, fits on there perfect. Really sweet man, love that. So with that uh, last detail, putting the round rivets on, that brings the build portion of Viora's knife to a close. Okay, here we go. We're out at the spray stand. We're going to coat our Fiora's knife with our Plasti Dip. And like we always say, do not spray, even if you're outside in a well-ventilated area, without your respirator. And as you can tell, there is the magenta remnants of our epic splash o -matic painting disaster. All right, sweet. Look at that thing, man. Wow, very nice. Several layers of Plasti Dip. We just took our time, built it up, and that looks pretty darn sweet, man. Look at that thing. All right, let's leave it alone. We're gonna let it dry all the way through, and then we're gonna paint it. All right, here we go. This should be a super easy paint job, okay? We're gonna come in with our silver. We're gonna get a sponge brush, all right? And we're just going to tap it on. All right, there we go. Check it out now. We're leaving 
little tiny bits of black still visible right up against the edge there because we're using the sponge brush and it's okay we want to do that because we're going to weather this and make it look dirty and that completely helps giving it that sort of dirty look if you leave that slight dark spot in the corner and that's And that's it. You could spray this if you wanted. You could have sprayed this with a, with a silver, but we don't want it that clean. We're gonna wanna dirty this thing up, okay? To make it weathered. And it really... We've got it all silver, all the way around. And like we said, we left a slightly little dark edge down here in the, in the crease at the bottom, and it's gonna help it look weathered and dirty. So we've got both sides, We've got the top piece right here. All right, now we're gonna leave that alone for just a little bit. We're gonna let it dry, then we're gonna use the same silver. We're gonna come in with this silver, and we're gonna mix it with a darker gray so we can get a darker metal, slightly darker metal for this top section. All right, now we're gonna come back in with our silver, and we're gonna mix in some of our medium gray. Right, that's a little bit darker than the regular silver. We want to go even darker, all right? We're going to come in with our wrought iron. That's actually pretty darn good. Let's just make sure we've got it nice and mixed up. All right, there we go. That's just slightly different, slightly. We just wanted it a little bit darker so there can be two tones on there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to come in with a brush. We're going to get some of our gray, and we're going to get down inside here where we couldn't reach with the sponge. All right, there we go. Check it out. Slightly different gray, just a little bit darker. And we've got some dark corners in there because of the sponge brush not fitting in there. We've got some dark edge right around the bottom of here on both sides. Very nice, and some slightly darkness in each of the corners down in here, just to help give it that dirty, weathered look. And then we're gonna come in later on and add to that weathering. But there you go, two tones of silver on the blade. Let's leave it alone. Let's let it dry, and then we will move on. All right, now we're gonna come in with our turquoise. It's a metallic paint, all right? We've got this metallic turquoise. Look at that, that's sweet. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into this little trench inside the handle, and we're going to get it. Doesn't take any skill whatsoever. All right, now what we're going to do is this, okay? Now comes the, not a hard part, but it's just tricky. you got to be careful. We're going to come in with our brush. We're going to use the, the edge of our brush, and we're going to do this inner bevel right here in our blue. All right, so we can come around like this. All right, we're going to go right around the edge just like that. All right, we're going to do probably two coats. Okay, there we go, check it out. We've got a nice sharp edge all the way around the top. Now we're gonna flip it around to this side and we're gonna come in and we're going to do a crisp edge at the bottom. And, okay, now what we're also doing is we're being really careful at the top because we don't wanna hit any blue on this darker version because we'd have to remix it and we might not be able to exactly match it. So getting this top line crisp is the most important. If we hit the bottom, that's just the straight silver. We can patch that up, so we don't have to be super careful at the bottom. But we... Actually, we're gonna come in kind of aggressive here. It doesn't matter if we hit the bottom silver, because we're going to cover that over when we're done. All right, there we go. We've got the bottom bevel on our blade done in blue.
All right, there we go. We've got a second coat down in here. We're gonna let our first coat of our blue dry, and then we're gonna hit a second coat on there. We're gonna come around now and do this side. All right, there we go. We've got multiple coats of blue down in this trench in the handle. We've got a couple coats of blue on the bevel, bottom bevel of our blade. Now we're gonna come back in with our silver and we're gonna to touch up a little bit. All right, there we go, that easy. Now we'll just clean up the other side and we'll be ready to move on. We're gonna come in with our little sponge brush. We're gonna make sure we got these rivets hit with silver. All right, now we're gonna come around here to the back handle and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit around the rivets, we're leaving a little dark ring around the bottom. All right, there we go. We've got silver on those two rivets and we've got silver on these two as well. And we'll let all that dry up, then we'll come. All right, now we're gonna come in with our black and we're going to just come in and we're gonna get all of our black area. And we've talked about this before, the black acrylic paint is much richer than the black Plasti Dip. All right, so that's why we're coming in and we're painting black over black. Now we're gonna use the edge of our brush and we're gonna cut in right up against our silver blade like that. All right. All right, let's leave that alone now. Let's let it dry up. All right, here we go. Last piece of painting detail. We're gonna come in and we are going to create a mud wash to dirty this up, all right? Real easy, you've seen us do this before. We're gonna come in with our brown. There's a little black. All right, there's some water. All right, look at that. That is mud. All right, let's bring our cardboard in. Now what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna take our mud and we're going to go on there just like that. Now we're gonna come in, we're gonna crumple up our paper towel. And we're gonna dab it. All right, see what's happening there? We're starting to get this really sweet sort of a grime happening. All right, there we go. Check that out. That is gross and grimy. That's all you do, right there. Look at that, man. There is some sweet grime on there. Wow. Very cool. All right, a little bit on the rivets. There we go. Very cool, super easy paint job, super easy. We saw a sponge on the silver, then you saw us mix a little bit of wrought iron into the same silver to get this darker tone. Then we came in and we brushed in the metallic blue on the bevel and back here in the handle. 
and then we came in and we brushed in all the black. And then you just saw our mud wash, and man, oh man, that is sweet, sweet, awesome. Look at that thing, nice and gross. All right, so with that last washing detail, that brings our Fiora's Knife build to a close. There it was, piece of cake. You saw us shape out the handle with the Dremel. You saw us finish off the back end of the handle, and then you saw us seal it and paint it. And like we said, we have two colors of silver on the blade. We took our regular silver and mixed some wrought iron in there to get a slightly darker tone. And then we came in with a brush, did the blue highlight, did the blue highlight in the handle, and then brushed on all the black. And then we came in with one of our favorite techniques, the mud wash, man, that stuff rocks. Slop it all on there, dab it around, add little bits where you want more, and it's nice and grungy and grody. Uh, super cool and really, really easy. We say that all the time because it is. Uh, so, that concludes making an EVA foam Fiora knife part two. Hope you liked it. If you didn't, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.